Hello? <coughs> uh, hello? <coughs> it's Perry. Hey, Chief. Lewis just told me you're not coming in. What's going on? <laughs> I think I've come down with something. I may not be able to make it in for a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months. Well, let me be honest. You don't sound sick. Can't I have had it? Anytime there's any kind of danger or an emergency, you call in sick. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that maybe, just maybe, you're a coward. Man up, Kent. A reporter reports. Get into work now. <laughs> Kent, you listen to me and you listen good. Drink plenty of liquids. Drink tea. Drink hot cocoa. Drink hot lava for all I care. But you get better and you get into work. I'll put Jimmy on this assignment because he's healthy as a horse and he needs the experience. But he's a photographer. You're my number one reporter. Get into work. That's an order. You got it, Chief. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Could it be? Hello? Olson, it's Perry. Oh, hi. hi. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. White. I've got an assignment for you. Yes, sir. Don't get excited. There's been a jewelry heist, and they flushed the diamonds down the toilet. I need you to go down to the city sewer mm -hmm. and do a little fishing expedition. Mm -hmm. Where's Clark? Well, I would send Kent, but big surprise, he called in sick. Have a good time. Uh, yes, sir. I'll get right on it. My dog's stuck in a tree! Somebody help me, my dog! Little boy, are you okay? My dog's stuck in a tree! Your dog? Oh my goodness! Uh, we need help! Superman! Superman, where are you? Superman, where are you? We need help, Superman! Uh, help me! Help me! Superman! Superman, Superman help! Grandpa, Superman! Superman, where are you? Superman! Uh, Superman! Where are you, Superman? We need you! That dog will come down, or he can just use a ladder. Where are you, Superman? Superman, where are you? We need you! Superman! Oh. Oh. Got it. I got him. I... Are you serious? It's my dog. It's a stuffed dog. I don't got hit in the eye for a stuffed dog. I love him. <laughs> got him stuck in the tree. Good. Dog on it. This lid's really stuck. <clears throat> Man, I wish Clark was here to help me. Oh, hey Lois. Hi Clark. I just happened to be in the neighborhood and I thought I would stop by. Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but I've been trying to get this jar open for a while. Can you help me? Oh, uh, I better not. I'm uh, feeling kind of weak. I think I need to pump some iron. Maybe take some iron. <laughs> well, I gotta go, but uh, try using a rubber band. See ya. A rubber band? That's weird. Of course, what's Clark know? But you know what? I bet, I bet Superman would know what to do if he was here. Superman! Superman, can you help me? Superman! Please! Oh! There's that rubber band. Well, what do you know? It does work. Thanks, Superman. It's time to have some fun. A light talk with Sammy Mudd. We got skits and interviews. We got everything but the blues. It's all. Talk is on. Light Talk with Sam Beeman. Welcome to Light Talk. Hey, that was a lot of fun there with some of my uh, friends, especially Robert G. Lee. I want to thank Robert for being a part of this. He's, uh, he's been very instrumental in my life. Actually, five years ago, they did a uh, comedy show for me, and Robert came out and uh, he just, he killed. It was so much fun. And so thank you, Robert. I really appreciate that. Check out some of Robert's comedy online when you get a moment. And uh, also, um, well, <laughs> rubber band, right? Yeah, a lot of fun there. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today. <sighs> Including an actor who you've probably heard of before, Jack O'Halloran. 
He was in the movie Superman 2, directed by Richard Donner, so we're going to check in with him later. But my first guest coming up is Pat McDougall, and uh, so I want to invite her on. But before that, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who's on the front line right now. For all of you doctors and nurses, RNs, we love you. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for what you're doing. But let's go ahead and take a short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Hey, I have actually been guilty of that myself. It was a song that I actually wrote many years ago. I was on a, a trip in Kentucky, mission trip, and, and I had the spirit. And I thought, man, I really want to share. I want to share a song that I wrote. I have the track right here. I brought it with me. And I gave it, I gave it to the sound person. It was a revival. <laughs> That's what made it so bad. It was a revival. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that the spirit didn't move that night. <laughs> I think the only thing was moving was people out of their seats. It was, it was bad. I, I was up there singing my own song, and in the middle, I was just like, "This man heals the sick." Y'all sing with me. They never heard it. I'm asking them to sing with me for the song that I wrote, and I haven't even got to the chorus to do the repeat. All right, we're back, and I want to bring on my first guest here. Uh, she actually reached out to me through Facebook, and I'm going to let her tell you about that. Please welcome Pat McDougall. Hey. Pat. <laughs> how are you, Sam? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. Uh, now, now tell me, how did you find me? I, th there's a story behind that, right? There is, because I love the Grinch. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and so I saw you as the Grinch, and then I started following you, and then I saw that you did this TV show and that it was full of inspirational stories. And I have a very inspirational story and I need to share it with the world. So. Yes, you do, yeah. you do. And uh, so tell uh, everybody what you've done, what you've been doing um, leading up to the job that you're currently in, just okay. so they kind of get an idea. Okay, so I was born in Columbus and I worked for Aflac for many, many years, 18 years. And then I went to work for Tesis for a while and you never know what path God has you on. And so I left there and went to work at the John B. Amos Cancer Center, right when they first broke. Sorry, the I know I probably like <laughs> hit my microphone there. I apologize, guys. I know, I know. <laughs> it has a special place in my heart. Yes, Literally, yes. they put a port in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> there are very special people there. Um, I went to work there three months after my father passed from cancer. Mm -hmm. Didn't expect that turn. So you never know where your life is going. And so I'm in IT, I've been in IT my whole life. And so I brought up that building with all the technology and stayed down there for two years and then went to work into Columbus Regional, which at the time was Columbus Regional, now it's Piedmont. And I've been there 15 years. So I'm in IT at Piedmont for 15 years. Fantastic. And you're right, the, uh, when you were talking about John B. Amos, I, I, I went to hit my chest uh, because really I, my, um, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for the good people over there. And I know that that was definitely not something that you saw, you know, helping out, you know, over there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I, I love all of the, the nurses, all of the doctors. Everybody is so giving and they're just like a family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even over at Piedmont, you know, I've had uh, nothing but good experiences. I mean, I spent, spent a month on the seventh floor. Wow. Um, and of course, you know what the seventh floor is. Mm -hmm. And, um, and everybody was just so wonderful to me. But, uh, but you have a story. We want to make sure that we get to that. Okay. Uh, how about we take a break? Yep, we'll sounds good. We'll take a break, good. and we're going to get back to uh, more with Pat here okay. in just a moment. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm back from Pie Island. Hey. Hi. Uh, hi, Robin. Um, it's me, Teresa. Ooh, doesn't like me. Uh, Douglas. Ooh. Taylor, you haven't heard about the outbreak? No. Well, it's called the coronavirus, and we're supposed to avoid all personal uh, interaction. So, like, sorry, but, um, and we have to, like, download this app called Informatine, where it's supposed to tell us, like, we're, what we're not supposed to do or what to do to avoid the coronavirus, and it'll give updates every so often, like, oh, like now. And we're supposed to be 20 feet apart. 
I have to do this? Yeah. Well, I just downloaded the app and I got a new mandate. It says that we all have to wear gloves. What? They didn't say what kind of gloves. Hey, I just got a new mandate. Gotta sleep standing up because the beds carry coronavirus? But I love my bed. It's Spider-Man themed. Oh, 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 ah, oh, oh, ah. I have to eat grass? That would be funny. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we actually, well, I say we, me and the kids, uh, we came up with this idea and uh, they said, basically they wanted to shoot a skit and I said, let's, you know, write it out. They did, I shot and produced it and uh, there you have it. So uh, they had a lot of fun. Well, let's come back to my guest here, Pat. Yes. We, we want to get to the story here. Okay. Okay, so, so uh, our audience members right now are, they're on the edge of their seats and they want to know who you are, what's going on. Some okay. of them already know who you are, but I want you to be able to tell them okay. your story. Okay, thank you, Sam. I appreciate you having me on the show. You're welcome. And my story is very interesting, one that I never anticipated having or being where I am today. And my story is very faith-based. And um, just like everyone else, I thought nothing, you know, you don't think bad things are gonna happen to you. And so in April 1st, on April 1st, uh, 2018, I fell and broke my arm. Um, and I broke it really bad. And it was horrible recovery. And I just thought it was the worst thing ever. Um, but I did not know what God had on the other side of that. So when you think that something is really bad, you never know it can turn out to be a great blessing. I went in to have surgery on my arm. I have pins and rods in my arm and I went in to have surgery and they wouldn't do the surgery. They told me they couldn't put me to sleep, that my blood work was messed up. And so I had a lot of tests over the next six weeks and when the test came back, I found out I was in stage five kidney failure. Had no signs and I just couldn't believe it because typically to get to the point of kidney failure where I was, you have to have 20 years of comorbidities and I had none of that, had no signs. It was an autoimmune disease that had come back from years and years ago and ate up my kidneys. Mm. And uh, that was very shocking. This was something that came back, you said? 
Yes, I you had know. it years ago in my feet, just a very small little nerve autoimmune thing in my feet, and it came back. Um, had no idea. I was very healthy, going to the gym three times a week. You know, it was a very big surprise. Yeah, I'm sure that was, especially if you are taking care of yourself, you're thinking, mm -hmm. you know, there shouldn't be anything wrong with you. Right, right. Didn't smoke, no high blood pressure, no diabetes, none of the symptoms. And so that was very hard. And I was very, very sick by the time they found it out. Um, had a lot of toxins in my body because the kidneys were not flushing the toxins mm -hmm. out. Um, little did I know that was the beginning of my journey. And so fast forward over the next 10 months, I had nine life-threatening things happen to me. I was in Piedmont hospitals combined, including the John Bemis Cancer Center, Northside Rehab, and Midtown and Northside for a total of over 100 days within 10 months. Um, you gain a lot of faith through that. The amount of support that I've had through my friends and my family, um, and especially, oh my gosh. Very important. Yeah, the, you know, everyone would keep asking me because I had some really bad things. I had blood clots, I had a bowel perforation, I had things that people just don't live through. Mm. And I always had a positive attitude. Which is great. <laughs> I, it's not you know, easy with your cancer. Yeah, it's you know. not easy. Mm -hmm. But yep. I, I know I know exactly what kind of mindset that you were in. Yeah. I'm, I'm but people didn't continue. understand why. They didn't understand why, and I kept praying that I would know what my purpose was because God was waking me up from things that my own physicians that I had worked side by side with for years were telling me, oh, I don't know if you're going to make it, and you know I just knew I was. And some days it was hard, but mm -hmm. everybody kept asking me, how are you doing this? And I said, it's not me, it's God. Mm -hmm. Because he kept waking me up every morning. And I said, as long as he's waking me up, I'm not giving up on him. And so I went through it all. Uh, he and I had some rough, rough paths. Mm -hmm. But the point is that I'm trying to make to people other than what I need out of it is that God has a path for us. It may not be the path you choose. It may not be a fun path on some days, but he has a path. And I told my son, I have one son and my daughter-in-law, and I told all my friends, I said, as long as I'm on his path, I'm good. Because I knew he would take care of me, regardless of what happened. And so my faith got me through. My faith and my family, the people at Piedmont were incredible. I mean, I had hundreds and hundreds of nurses, rehab therapists, um, you know, x-ray, I mean, doctors, like everybody that took care of me. And they did such a great job. The rehab center at Northside is amazing. Mm -hmm. I was there three times because I couldn't even get out of a chair. Um, I was at home doing IV antibiotics. It was a long road. You know, and today um, and for a long time now, I've been back at work full time. Yeah, I was going to say you mm -hmm. you look very very healthy. <laughs> I, I went back to work full time. I go to dialysis. They finally put me on dialysis because I really did almost okay. die that one time, um, one of many. But um, I went on full time dialysis, so I go three times a week for four hours okay. um, each time, and. Um, you know, there's a reason for to me to be there, and I still oh, work. That's yeah. amazing. I still but, work. But, uh, and so right now. Yep. So right now, I, for one year, I've been going to Piedmont in Atlanta to the uh, transplant center. And I've been trying to qualify for a year because you have to qualify to be um, a candidate for a mm -hmm. donor. And I had to go through a lot of testing and stuff. And about a month ago, I got approved. Okay for a transplant, for a kidney transplant. My blood pressure is low because dialysis makes your blood pressure low. Mm -hmm. So they gave me the stipulation because the typical weight for a kidney, um, and this is a deceased kidney in Georgia, mm -hmm. is usually between five to eight years. Okay. And my blood pressure is so low that was too long. 
And so they gave me the go ahead that I have to have I have to have a living donor, which is a lot better for you anyway, lasts longer, a lot be, um, a lot less chance of rejection. Mm -hmm. And so I have to get it within one year, okay. and that's a short time, and it has to be a living donor. And so I am reaching out every way that I can. I have a Facebook page. It's named uh, Kidney for Pat. If you'll please go to Kidney for Pat and share the page, read the page. Um, it gives you, we're going to show in a moment, the bottom of the screen, the telephone number number that you call. They told us um, um, candidates that they don't want us having to worry about screening or anything like that. And so they want us just to push people to that phone number and to that website okay. um, for the, and it's at the Piedmont um, Atlanta Transplant Center. And they do all the screening. The initial screening is that you fill out a surgical questionnaire. They want to make sure that you're a good candidate and healthy. Sure and that you don't have diabetes or some kidney-related mm -hmm. function. Um, people also ask, do you have to be a perfect match? Because you used to you have know, to be. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. I, I'm not lying to you. When I was, telling, uh, I was telling the kids this, and my stepson said, could I give her mine? I was like, oh, how sweet. I, 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 was, Aww. I didn't know what to say. I was like, that is so kind of you. Oh my gosh. You know, and there's probably somebody out there right now though. That's sweet. That's watching and, and they're hearing your story and they're probably saying, can she have mine? So if that's you out there, if you're watching this program uh, via the internet, via cable, whatever it is, we want you to make sure that you go to Pat's Facebook page and we want to make sure that you contact her and we do have that uh, contact information on there. So Pat, we're going to make sure we can do our part here at Light Talk uh, through CTV Beam, and uh, we're so thankful that you came on the show. Thank you um, so much. I know that we're going to have to cut here, uh, but, uh, but before we do, is there one last thing you'd like to say? There is. Um, I have a new grandson. He's 18 months old, and I didn't get to hold him until he's six months old because I had a bad lung infection. Mm -hmm. And so the reason that I want my new kidney is not for me. It is for my son, my daughter-in-law, my grandson, um, but mainly so that I'll have more time to tell people what God can do for you. You yeah. have to have 100% faith, all in. Amen. And he can do miracles. I'm a miracle. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you so much, yeah, Pat. Thank you. Thank you for being on here. And also, I just want thank to encourage you, so you out there uh, to make sure that you lift up Pat in prayer um, as well. Amen. And her family. Yes. Um, so we're so thankful again that you came on to the show here at Light Talk. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to cut for a break here. We'll be back in just a moment. Drink tea, drink cocoa, drink hot lava for all I care, but get better and get back to work. There was a diamond heist and they flushed the diamonds down a toilet. You need to go to the city sewage plant and do a search. Hello? Help! My dog! What? Little boy, you okay? Yes, you're not, huh? <laughs> yeah. Why are you Superman? Doggone you, Superman! Tired Superman. Action! I forgot to get him. Get your dog out. Jay Jam Jameson. That is not his name. <laughs> Superman, where are you? Superman, where are you? We. No, we. No, no, not we. We are you. We are you. We are you. <laughs> we should try a rubber band. Take care. Bye. See ya. Adios. Ah. Oh, hey, Lois. Hi. Hi, Clark. <laughs> You're just like. <laughs> it's a bowl. Good gravy. That was weird. <sighs> what do I? Cut. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're back here, and I have my guest on, Jack O'Halloran, and we're going to check in with him. Jack, how are you? I'm doing the best I can, whatever will let me get away with. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to let you know, 
that uh, I've got my Superman mug. <laughs> Uh, well, I wanted to check in with you uh, because Superman was one of my favorite, favorite movies growing up. Superman, uh, one, two, three, four. You know, of course, I was a big Superman fan. But, uh, you know, how did you feel working in those pictures? I know you're in the first two. Well, I mean, the first two are the best ones. You know, they, they should have never, they should have never fired Donner. That was ridiculous. And if Christopher would have said, no Donner, no me, then they would have brought Donner back and Donner would have done three, four, five, six, would have been a whole different franchise. But the salt guys are kind of greedy guys and they didn't want to pay people. I mean, how do you, how do you cut Marlon Brando out of a picture? They Marlon cut. Brando had shot all the footage for two and they cut him out because they didn't want to pay him. <sighs> then they did the Donner cut and they put him back in again. And which shows a much better picture. I don't know if you've ever seen oh, the yes, Donner cut too. Yes, I have. A much better movie. Um, so they, you know, the Saul kinds messed up the series themselves. Would have been, I mean, one and two were good as it was, but they would have been much better. Yeah, I really wish that we could have seen you out, uh, seen you more throughout uh, the other the other two pictures. Of course, even more pictures, like you said. Well, like uh, three and four, they were probably because we got locked up. We never died at the end. In fact, we're we're waiting for the AT and T Warner merger to settle down because we've got a great storyline, and because of this new technology hologram, we can bring Christopher back. And I've got a storyline to bring Christopher and the three villains back. That yeah, would I got chills. Monsters. I got chills thinking about that. Would, no, it would be great. No, would, it's would actually going to work really well. Would you love to to return back to this character? Yeah, for what we're going to do with him, yeah. We're going to I have a I have an amazing storyline that works really well for what's happening with all the Marvel characters and everybody coming out of space and, and invading Mar invading Earth and everything. So we would uh, we would actually there's a way to bring the three back out of jail and uh, to do a mental transition where they would be cohorts of Superman. He would have his own little group. Okay. I would kind of, kind of neat to see the, to go back to the old way of Superman and not killing everybody and, you know, the, the darkness that they went to. Well, I would definitely be interested in seeing that. Of course, I, I would love to see you again because uh, I loved Nan uh, growing up, you know, as a child. I just thought that uh, everything that you brought to to that role was uh, amazing and how you played this child. Like, you know, we, 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 when we, Hackman and I were doing a picture in Spain called March or Die, and they flew us up to see Donner about the Superman movie. And I had read the script. And, uh, and he was talking to me about doing the character and about playing a mute character. And I said, you know, I really embrace it because Jackie Gleason was a friend of mine and he did a picture called Gigo, which he won an Oscar for. I said, and you know, I would love to play a character where I use facial and body language. And I'm gonna take this brutish guy and I'm gonna play him like a child. And working his learning how to work his eyes and, and the, like, playing an agile thing to Zod. I said, you know, somebody's got to relate to the children in the audience. So we, we did it and it worked out quite well. You know? It kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, Frankenstein and young Frankenstein. You know, it, well, uh, a lot of people, you know, I remember when I did my first Comic-Con and, and uh, people walked up to me and they said, my God, you can really talk. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that made me laugh. And, you know, and, they, and then they said to me, well, you know, when I was a child, oh, your character scared me to death, but I loved the character. So it, it evidently came off very well. You know. Yes, it did. And you've played so many different characters. And of course, um, I was also surprised to to learn that you were uh, in Dragnet. You were that that mean guy Game in Dragnet. <laughs> I couldn't believe Game that. Man. that big, thick mustache. It worked actually well. I mean, uh, Danny was... It was Tom Hanks' breakout picture, and, and Danny Aykroyd's Danny Aykroyd. I mean, he was, you could see Dragnet 50 times, and you would not get all the one-liners that he threw around. I believe I mean, it. It was just, it was, uh, uh, we, we had a lot of fun doing the picture. 
you know, uh, that reminds me of Ghostbusters, which was another Ackroyd picture where I must have seen that movie a hundred times. And every time I pick out a different, a different one liner, because there's so many. Well, it's Danny Ackroyd. He just, uh, he, he, he wings it. I know. He's, <laughs> he's, a, he's a fun guy to work with. Well, uh, I want to I want to transition here for just a moment to to make sure that we talk about something that uh, that is very dear to your heart, um, the family legacy, and I want to pick up on that for a moment. Family legacy is a book that I decided to write because, you know, I, I get tired of listening to all the stories that people do about uh, organized crime and stuff, and um, and my father was a very infamous individual uh, in New York. And, um, and you know, if you tell the true story about how they came into America and the things that they did, you would realize that in the beginning, they took a lot of the illicit monies that they made and they put it back into the growth of a nation. Well, Jack, uh, thank you so much for coming on Like Talk. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I just I wanted to check in with you. And I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, I, I hope that, that you get that Superman deal locked in because. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh, I mean, the, the technology is so brilliant today. It is. This hologram deal works so well. And if you brought Christopher back and we brought back the all-American way of doing Superman, because people forget that Superman was the, the first superhero of America. He was. You understand? And, and they, to, to take it out of bounds, I thought was forced, you know, because he didn't, he didn't go around killing people. He saved people mm -hmm. and right. made sure people got locked up, the right people and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is. Well, thank you, Jack. I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and cut to a commercial here. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. All right. Thank you so okay, much. my friend. I really appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. You take care. <laughs> she said, you have grandpa hair. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> Just jump <show my> on. <laughs> what is the definition of bad? Well, that would be magical. You know, it's Mickey Mouse. It's a clock. Okay, great. Yes, I remember when Willie Nelson did that. I just like the way it makes my cowboy boots look, you know. Just... <laughs> you try to lock it, I whip your head, I whip it. Blame it all on my roots, I showed up in a suit, and the coffee was brewing during prayer. <laughs> Don't give me a lie, you are contagious. Don't give me a lie, nobody leaves. I got married in the very next month. I was diagnosed with children. <laughs> yes. Well, that was a lot of fun with Jack. We've actually had a great episode. So I want to say thank you to my guests, Pat McDougall and Jack O'Halloran. And of course, the actors that were on the show today, Robert G. Lee, featuring Robert G. Lee. And of course, Hope Johnson came back, Don Terrius Ruff, uh, Justin Foreman in there as Jimmy, and uh, uh, Liberty, Jack, Reagan, Alice, Ali, Dak, there were so many people in there. The Stevens family, we're just so thankful that all of you that who had participated in this episode. And we also want to say again, thank you to the doctors, to the RNs, to the nurses, to those of you who are watching right now that are on the front lines. And I know you're tired. I know some days it can be so tough. You have to see things that we can never imagine. And we're grateful for that. We're grateful for you. Know that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, CTV Beam. Take care and God bless.